idea es empezar esta serie de, de charlas uh, mostrando un poco sobre las cosas fuertes del departamento y también invitando a un montón de, digamos, de personas uh, digamos, eh, importantes para que nos vengan a ver de sus experiencias tanto digamos, desde parte de, de la física como de, digamos, de su contribución al país entonces iniciamos esa serie de charlas eh, con Leandro Rocha, quien es eh, recién llegado al departamento, eh, está como puesto ahora eh, digamos, en el departamento de física trabajando en estos temas. Ah, Leandro básicamente hizo su doctorado en la Universidad de Sao Paulo, ah, básicamente su escuela está en Brasil eh, y nos va a contar un poco sobre, digamos de una forma muy general, nos va a contar un poco sobre digamos, su investigación. Eh, recuerden eh, preguntas en cualquier momento, eh, yo realmente digamos tratar de preguntar absolutamente todo lo que entiendan el propósito de este colegio es que para los estudiantes quede claro va a haber una parte donde él va a hablar un poco de cosas más técnicas pero va a ser que todo queda digamos perfectamente ¿no? entendido uh -huh. ah, eso es digamos eh, no sé cuál sea tu estilo pero pues la idea es que ellos pregunten un montón e interrumpan al final van a tener de todas formas 10 si tienen preguntas así súper fundamentales pues déjenlas para los últimos 10 minutos del coloquio Uh, pero cosas técnicas vayan digamos pero entramos muchas gracias por aceptar la invitación Alejandro mm. eres el primero eh, sería bueno que te hicieras por acá para que quedaras como en, el, en la cámara ok eh, vienes a sacarte de allá de tu zona de confort pero eh, y mm. listo gracias por aceptar la invitación y continúa uh. Okay, uh, I will speak in English, okay, because uh, uh, my, my natural language is Portuguese, but my Spanish is not so good yet, so, and you, is, ev is everybody listening to me, uh, is, is it okay? Um, and uh, and uh, pro uh, Professor Juan said that it, it was more or less technical, the problem is, I, I, I must apologize that I think it, was, it, it is a little bit I think it is technical a little bit. Uh, anyway, but uh, you, uh, you're a physicist, I hope you can understand more or less, or understand the idea. So the presentation, is, my presentation is the dynamical disks, dynamical, so the disks are variable, of BE stars, so the BE stars, and their importance to stellar evolution and the astrophysics of disks. Uh, so uh, this is an uh, is it okay okay this is an artistic image of what we think today is a BE star a BE star looks like this it is a blue star a hot star which ejects at occasion occasion on times uh, a disk that surrounds it surrounds it. it it is a disk made of gas hot gas from the star so the star some and the star rotates really fast and it ejects these these circumstellar disks around it uh, so be stars be be stars means they mean that they are b in spectral type and they have balmer lines in emission so be is b plus emission and b spectral type mean means that it means that the the star has uh, more or less like a, it, it is a hot star uh, with a mass between three solar masses and 17 solar masses so the ma solar mass is the mass of the sun and they are non super giant they are more they are main sequence star stars as we call it so they are in, in burning hydrogen in their in their cores like the sun is and the, this is what in how we define they are main sequence stars so they have Balmer, li Balmer lines in emission. Bal so uh, Balmer lines. I think this is not nice to be to see here, but here we have a photo of the of the Pleiades cluster, which can be seen by naked eye if you I it is possible to see. And here we have the seven main main stars, and here we have the lines of the hydrogen. Some some are in absorption here. You can see because they, some are in absorption and some are in emission. So, for example, this star is a BE star. This is a BE star. This is not, or at least we don't know because some some of BE stars they have this emission and some do not. And sometimes they they present it and sometimes it disappears. When we have lines in emission, what it 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 means in astrophysics that they, they have some cloud around it of material because they have some material around there, there's not just the star there is a some some material around it uh, and uh, 
this material because uh, and this the, the radiation that comes from the star interacts with this material and then it gets into your direction and so you see this this emission when in the in the region where the atoms absorb this, these photons so the the atoms absorb photons in levels of energy in certain levels of energy and so we have in the spectrum of these stars some emission when they have this secret circumstellar material. And these stars are not rare. They represent 10 to 10% 10 to a few dozens of the B type stars. So the, the, the hot stars, like we call B stars, they are the most, the biggest subgroup of these stars. And the first main feature of these stars are, as, is that they look more or less like this. They are, they are fast rotators, they, they rotate really fast, and so they are not spherical anymore. So this has a w, the w parameter of 0.6, and this one has a 0.9, and which is a parameter that goes from 0 to 1, and it is 1 when it's critically rotating. So a BE star has more or less W of 0.81, so it looks more like this one, which is these stars are rotating fast, and because of that, their poles are hotter than the, the, their equatorial regions. Uh, so here, the temperature is higher than in the equator. And because, well, fast, you imagine that uh, when it's rotating fast, uh, the equatorial regions suffer a, a centrifugal, centrifuge, centrifuge force. And so they, it tends to try to be in orbit around the star. When it is W is one, the material is actually in orbit around the star. Um, well, the, why they rotate fast? Well, maybe because during the evolution of these stars, the, the core inside the star contracts, and this angular momentum from the core that contracts is transported to the outer regions, and then, therefore, they accelerate. So BE stars probably are stars that already begun very fast, the, from the cloud and then from in, started in the main sequence. Or maybe, and a second possibility, is that the, ver, the, the fast rotation is because of the, the, they have a companion, a binary companion, maybe. And this binary companion transferred some matter to this star, and, uh, and then it, well, some uh, during its lifetime, and that accelerated the star, maybe. We, they, they, these are the possibilities, for example. Well, BE stars, uh, in 1994, the, it was a dis discussion before that if the, the, the material was like a cloud, spherical cloud, or some, something more uh, oblate, or something more like a disk. And this image made with interfer interferometry, interferometry is not like, uh, well, interferometry is a technical, in a, a technic technique in astrophysics to, that permits us to see in high, in high what? Um, resolution. resolution, yes, thank you. So, so here we see that the, this material is disk-like, for example, in 1994. And uh, the double, some, the, the emissions that we saw, not very well in that, that, uh, that uh, photo, but here are emission lines more or less in the hydrogen lines here, and this line from iron here, and some present this double peak emission, and some present just a single peak. And that depends just in the way you look it to the star. If you're looking here to, from above, so you're seeing the disk in a face, in your face, you see more or less the, peak, the, the emission as single peaked, and if you're looking edge on, you see the emission, uh, the two peaks, because from Doppler effect, the, these are the regions that are rotating fast from the disk, and here are the regions that are close to the star, and they, so they have a huge emission in the both sides, and you have an absorption central to the star because from uh, at small velocities. Uh, okay, so the double peak essentially says that the disk is rotating. The disk is ionized because the star is hot. So yeah, the star is hot. So there are no, there, there is no dust around it. So the, the, these disks are chemi are much simpler than the disks of young stellar objects, which are the disks that form planets and 
uh, the disks that for uh, yes the f that form the solar systems like so the, these disks that form our solar systems are usually colder because the star is colder and they have a lot of dust which complicates a lot how we to uh, how we can study them and they are nearly Keplerian the the velocity is like the Kepler law from uh, another feature of BE stars is that, is that they have variable injections of matter from the disk. So the stars, this disk is not uh, uh, constant there. Sometimes the disk, uh, the star ejects material some some way, and this material creates a disk. So we he we here we see a brightening of the star is is a function of time. This is time in years, no, in days, but this is a. Um, modified Julian date. So this here we have the years. It covers more or less, I think, 33 years. This is a, a, a work from my colleague Mohamed Goreshi. And we see here uh, brightenings and then the dissipation of the disk. The disk gets more or less absorbed by the star. And then there is an ejection of matter again. It creates the disk and then it gets absorbed and, and creates these cycles more or less. Uh, so B stars are variable. This is a property. And here we see another example of, a, of the line in, in absorption. Here we have a, a, a star O end. During two years, it happened following like this. So there was absorption here, and the, then, then the disk disappeared. Here we don't see the disk anymore. We just see the absorption from the photosphere of the star. And then the, then the disk created again. So here appeared faster regions near the, 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 the star. And then the, these regions expanded, creating the disk again. Um, so the, the only theory of disks that, satis that uh, satisfy, uh, satisfies the, the observations is what we call the VDD, the viscous decretion disk which is like this, this, this represents. So there is the star here. The disk has a, is a turbulent disk. Uh, so there is a plasma disk. This plasma is made of plasma because it's hot gas and more than 10,000 10, degrees, for example. There is a wind. The, these stars have, have a wind, so there is material being lost from the other regions, but then they, they form this disk. Uh, so the VDDs are accretion disks with an inner source of mass and angular momentum. The accretion disk is like uh, is the is the same disk as the young stellar objects uh, disks, the the disks that form the planets. Or, so, but the disks that form planets have the, their sources of mass and angular momentum away from the star, and this mass is coming to the star and, the, and then some part of it, some part of it become the planets uh, as they dissipate. Or, but in the, in the BE stars, the source is near the star. So the disk is created here and it expands away is, uh, and it goes away by, this, by these viscous forces that couple all the disk and create them. All right. Uh, the, what creates this disk is probably pulsation. We don't know yet. So this is the BE mechanism, which is still a mystery. Why the, these disks get created? The, what's the physical thing that happens inside the stars that create them? And uh, the viscose, what is this viscosity is, in, in, is created bar, more probably by this magneto-rotational instability, which is a kind of instability in, in plasma disks which are disks, uh, okay, and, and this creates the viscosity, the turbulent viscosity that, span, that expands the disk away. Uh, the viscous decretion disk has been successful. Here we see uh, successful in, ex in modeling the, the, observes, the observables of BE stars. So here we see the uh, uh, spectrum uh, and we see the here the, the real, the observations, and here the model. Here we see polarization, and here we see observations in the model. There is a little uh, thing here. And this was created with a, a cold, uh, with, a, with a program that simulates radiative transfer. So the, 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 the light from the stars that interacts with material and the physical things that are in the material and how they go in your direction, in our direction, and it simulates the observables like this. So this is the, that star, that star I presented here. This star, Zeta Tauri, 
is the, is the name. Here we have model of Zeta Tauri with the observations. So the disk is seen edge on like this, and you're seeing the disks like this. Uh, another example from my colleague Robert Clement in 2000, 2015, he adjusted uh, here a uh, spectral distribution f with four orders of magnitude. And here the lines, he, he, the, these, these red things are the observations. And he, well, more or less, he showed that with one parameter, he adjusted well the, the, the lines that are from, from the outer of the disk, here and here. With the other parameter, he adjusted better the other line. So yeah, there, there is a little variation, but it adjusts well. But uh, well, so the, the, when the disk is stable, the theory has been very well tested, so we trust this viscous decretion disk. But, the vi but several BE stars are far from the steady state. And here we have examples of light curves, which are, light curves are these variations in brightening, as you can see. Some, there is a creation of disk and there is variation. So look at how the, the brightening of the star changes. Here we have more or less 10 years, or 12 years, of covering, so this takes 12 years. 12 years it happened with the stars, with the brightening of the stars, in in a certain band in lumina in brightness. But there is a precious well, uh, there is a precious fraction of B light curves that sh shows bumps and dips, like these. So here we have a bump, and here we have a dip, and uh, and some other bumps and here other kinds of bumps. These are more interesting than these complicated ones because we can see how, where the, there was no disk very clearly and here, and here there is no disk. So we see the creation and the dissipation of the disk very clearly. The, these, these light curves look very, like, very much like with the simulations of the viscous decretion disk when there was an injection, uh, when we created the disk, there is an injection here and then a dissipation of the disk. Uh, uh, they, uh, excuse me, uh, Juan, they can make questions. Uh, yes, please remind them. No, yes, so, so yes, please do questions if you want. But anyway, <laughs> uh, so here we have the, theor the theory in a, in a simulation here. And if the disk is seen pole on, so if you're seeing the disk uh, like here in your face, so if you're seeing from above, you see the, this, this creation because the disk brightens what you're seeing. And if you're seeing from edge on, the disk, part of it is in front of you. So what you see is, a, is, a dim, uh, is this kind of a diminishing of the brightening because it got in front of the star. So this, the, the, the difference between these two is just an inclination of the star. Um, and uh, the, the uh, one, another thing, uh, this blue, the only difference between these lines is the, the alpha parameter. Alpha parameter is a, is a measure of the viscosity of the disk, which is a measure of the forces that, inter that couple all the, the gas in the disk. And the, uh, this alpha parameter, the bigger it is, the more, the, f the, the bigger is the, f is the force. So the fast it grows in time and dissipates in time. So the blue one grows faster and it dissipated faster than the, the black one, for example, which had a one tenth of the vis viscosity. Uh, Is the, the same time? Can we go back? Yes, the same time in years. No, the rise and the slowing and the decay is the same kind of uh, Rise? No, what? The rise of the curve is the same as the one that is uh, if you fit up with the exponential and then you get the time, uh, the, uh, the rise time, the... Yes, if you fit with uh, if an exponential, for example. So both times are the same? So it takes the same time to go up and down? Or no, no. If you fit, you see that, the, for example, this has a, an exponent in your exponential smaller than, than the other one. So the, when it, if, if it was really fast, it would be like a, something like that. So uh, yeah, is that... Uh, yeah. Okay, this, this, had, this offered one, this showed one important thing. Uh, the alpha parameter is an important and largely unknown physical parameter for disks in general in, ast in astrophysics. 
And th there was a realization from these simulations that the, the viscosity parameter is the main responsible for the time scales of the variations. And in 2012, uh, Alex Kasioff, who was my advisor, he estimated for the first time the alpha for a dissipation of a BE star, for, of a BE star for, in, the, in that case it was omega CMA, the star. He received, for example, an, with an alpha equals 0.3, there is this dissipation with an alpha equals to one is the green one, for example. And he found alpha equals to one, but this result was revised today put to, for, to 0 0.21 because of uh, something that we will discuss later. And uh, the, the simulations that, that use turbul that, the turbulent simulations, they usually predict alphas between 0 0.01 and 0 0.1, for example. Here we see the alphas they predict with time. It is, bet it is in more or less in 0 0.05, for example. So this is, a, this is known from other, another kinds, kind of disks that we know the, from, the, which are from the dwarf novae these disks, they, so our, dis, our disks are consistent with these disks and they, they are not consistent with the normal simulations that usually. So this is a problem, but we, here we are showing that BE stars can also uh, be used to constrain these models, uh, turbulent models, uh, being, being useful for the study of the disks in general. Because, because, as I said, BE stars are gaseous disks. They don't have dust. They are simpler to study than other disks. Uh, and another thing, rotation is, a, is an important thing in stellar evolution. Here we have the uh, predictions of stellar evolution. Here we have luminosity, which is power, just it's m and temperature. And as the star evolves, let, let's look, for example, this five stellar masses star it, it uh, increases its luminosity. Here is what we call the main sequence. And then they go uh, and then they move fast away and here they become what we call the red giants or the giant stars here. So they move from a uh, higher temperature. The temperature is increasing in that direction. That happens in astrophysics sometimes. So it is decreasing temperature in the surface and they are becoming therefore yellow and redder in here, and they become more luminous as time goes on. But rotation, uh, in the, what rotation does? It induces the bigger cores because rotation in this induces turbulence there. So the cores, in, if the core, which, which are burning hydrogen inside, uh, uh, are burning hydrogen. So if they are bigger, they increase the luminosities and the lifetime, the time they spend in the main sequence here. Uh, rotation induces the star to become oblate, like that, so they are not spherical anymore. And uh, they, uh, rotation induces angular momentum transport that can, they, it can determine the luminosity of the supernovae because these stars are massive, so they become supernovas. And supernovas are important in our understanding of the universe and rotation and what remains from the stars. So maybe the rotation of the neutron stars and the black holes that are the core, remnants of the core of these stars. And uh, uh, when, uh, as the core contract... Uh? I, I don't understand why rotation uh, is why rotation increases? Because rotation creates a bigger core, and the core is where hydrogen is being uh, is being fused into helium. You know, in the in the stars like the sun, uh, hydrogen is being converted by a f uh, nuclear nuclear fusion, into, and this creates the energy from the stars. If the core is bigger, because the uh, it it. Uh, Rotation induces turbulence inside the stars, so the, the region where this is happening increases because uh, the region is already turbulent and the turbulence increases the, the radius of the score because it increases the region where turbulence is happening. So it increases the, the luminosity because more is being converted and, and, and the amount of fuel because if the core is bigger, there is more fuel to be burned. And so the, it increases the, light, the time in the main sequence. All right. Uh, as the core contracts, the, the angular momentum is transported outwards, uh, accelerating. 
Uh, okay. Uh, uh, what, what happens? A as the core contracts, um, angular momentum is transported to the outer layer. So as the star evolves, it tends to increase its speed in, in the equatorial regions. Some part of this angular momentum is removed from the, the winds that the, the, the star has, but the remaining angular momentum must be removed by the creation of these disks. So in stellar evolution, they, 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 they have to create a disk to remove the angular momentum that is transported from the core to the surface. If they, that didn't happen, the star wouldn't be stable anymore. It, so it must happen. And here they have the mass lost, which is connected to the angular momentum transport in their predictions uh, with mass. And here with a prediction that they, we inst but they used with a wrong model, not, not the VDD. So they, they thought it was okay because, well, our we, we, we have to remove some angular momentum. And here we, they, the observation says that we remove more than the necessary. So it, it is okay, but these, these are based on the wrong model, not the viscous decretion disk. So this was the thing. So as Thomas Rivinio said, BE stars some decades ago considered to be peculiar and of little relevance to the main field of hot and massive stars may turn out to be the best suited and as well the best understood laboratories of stellar physics relevance for the upper main sequence, the upper main, for, for the stars massive, but not so massive because they are the, even more massive than the B stars. Uh, okay, so a key, uh, <laughs> here we have, <laughs> here we have uh, uh, again this, that, that image created by a code with the, from, the, from the star Zeta, Zeta Tau. And more, here we go to the, my study, this is, Okay, this is, okay. A physical description, so now we have to describe physically the viscous decretion disk when it's variable. Uh, we start with the mass continuity equation. So this, con this equation just says that mass is conserved. Mass that flows into a region uh, plus the mass that is created in that region, but uh, it's not created. Here we have a creation, but it's actually from the star because we are just seeing, because we will just model the, the disk. So here we have the connection between the star and the disk, and here we have the continuity equation. And this is like the F equals MA uh, from, from, this is the Newton law, equation of motion for, for fluids. Here we have the force, the gradient of pressure, and here we have the viscous force, which is the coupling between the, uh, in, the, in the fluid. We assume that the disk is thin and axisymmetric because we know this, and we, as we use the, the force from, from, uh, from the star, so this is the force of a central star, the, the ideal gas law, and, he, and the viscosity parameter is just this. This stress tensor here, its, it's R and phi component is an alpha multiplied by the pressure. Just that, because we don't understand yet very well this. Viscosity, this is the alpha parameter. This is what it is. So we, we, we it's not working. No, something happened. Ah, here we have a lot of equations. No, it's, uh, with these equations, we end up with this big equation here. So here we have the mass injection. So this is, the uh, and the torque free. Uh, you see, it, it is a little technical, but anyway. Here we have the alpha parameter, and the, here we have the sound speed is isothermal, and this is how the, the, the st uh, stellar, no, this is how the, the, the surface density evolves in time. So, uh, there, there, I should present here a movie, but the problem is, so I'll have to skip the movies. Um, so, so th this just says that uh, this, this va these variable light curves are the response of this va the variations of the sigma according to this equation here. And uh, one thing is interesting here, a, a realization. You see that this equation has parameters that depend on the temperature of the disk. Here we have the, the temperature here. We have the, radio, the, the equatorial radius and the all parameters from the star. Here we have the mass of the star. And we can separate it 
separate them, assuming an isothermal disk and the alpha parameter is independent of the radius, we can isolate the alpha here, alpha is here, and this tau parameter here, it becomes isolated from the whole, the whole equation, and this mass injection rate becomes this parameter sigma zero t, which is given by this, and it is just, this sigma zero is just another way of saying the, the mass injection rate. But it is, it is more interesting because it is related to the, 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 the density near the, the, the stellar equator, equatorial region, which is something that we can measure with, with, uh, with uh, the radiative transfer code. So this tau parameter here, it is depends, on, depends on this stellar parameter, so it's the time scale parameter. And, so, uh, and here now we have an equation doing it again. The, here, this tau becomes, divide, we pass it here dividing this del delta t, like this. And now we have an equation that does not depend on the alpha anymore, does not depend on the temperature of the star, the, rate, the, the mass of the star, whatever. So we have just a, a model that varies from the, the equatorial region, which is one, to, to an outer radius, which is very far away. It depends only on the mass injection rate given by this parameter and nothing else. So we just let, let, let these numbers, mass, equatorial radius, temperature of the star, to be determined by the observations. And here we, we can compute an, a model, a grid of models based on only on this, the mass injection rate or the sigma, the, the what, the density, the density and the time it takes to evolve. So here we have the relevant physical quantity, which is this asymptotic surface density, which is called the sigma zero, and the, the steady state angular momentum loss rate. Uh, uh, this is a good measure of the instantaneous angular momentum loss rate in dynamical disks. We, I should present here, I, I don't know if I can. Uh, can I escape it? Let me see if it runs. Let me see if it repeats also. No. What's this? Uh, hmm? Okay, repeating. Okay. So in, in that bumper which we, we saw the, the mass here we have the mass injection rate and then it disappears, and here we have the evolution of the surface density. So it, bu it builds a disk here, we see the disk in, uh, in volume density, it builds and it creates the, the, the bump and then it dissipates, most of the mass comes back to the star when it dissipates. But the angular momentum lost by the star, which is this, these two lines, the, the, the thick line is the angular momentum that is in the disk, and the, the thin line is the angular momentum that is lost by the star. So when the star loses angular momentum, this angular momentum is in the disk, but at, after some time, it starts to go away from the star, away from the disk, in, into the outer region. So this, when, when the disk dissipates, this, the, the angular momentum that is in the disk Come, goes away and it doesn't come from the uh, back to the star. So there is a, a loss in angular momentum. Well, this is a is an interesting thing because we are think, we were at first thinking about mass loss, but the angular momentum is much more better constrained by the the observations than the mass loss because we don't know the outer region of the disk, but the the angular momentum does not depend almost nothing about almost. It doesn't depend for, uh, with this outer region. So, and how to come back here? F5? Uh, control, uh, 
L. Control what? L. 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 Okay. So uh, another uh, another thing to mention is the mass reservoir effect. What shows the uh, the mass reservoir effect is that some some disks they they do they do ex um, appear to build up. Uh, it take a long to build up and long to dissipate, and some disks appear to build up very fast and then dissipate very fast. And this is a this is not does not mean that the alpha parameter is bigger here and is smaller here. It means that it's because there is a problem because the longer the disk builds up, when it's the matter is being reaccreted back, it takes longer to to be reaccreted. So it appears that the disk, so there there is more matter being accreted until the disk is dissipated. So it it appears that the disk takes longer to disappear, but it's not an, an effect of alpha. So we had to find a new parameter that is, is the build-up time, the scale build-up time, which is the, related to this, the time it takes. So now let's, I'll try to go more faster because we are almost running out of time. So the motivation of this work is to extract from bumps like these, which we have the build-up of the disk and the dissipation, seen pole on and here edge on, all the relevant physical quantities better to understanding of the BE mechanism and the viscose mechanism, which where we can measure the alpha here and the, the angular momentum being lost from the star. So we, we made a lot of, uh, of these models. So uh, we, we, we modeled three stars with different masses. So one from seven, 11, 15 masses, several inclinations being seen, several uh, rates of mass injection, which is the sigma zero, and several times, so uh, it build up time. So one is faster here, the, it's very fast, and some others that are, take longer to build up. Uh, so here we have what we, we observed, the, these are the simulations, the light, the observations. Here we have in different uh, wavelengths, so here more in blue when he, until more red. When we see more towards the infrared, the, the, the bumps become bigger, if they are seen here in 30 degrees and here in 85 degrees. And since we have scaled the time, remember that time parameter here, we can just fit uh, Obser the observation here, the, the amount, how much time it takes, we just fit with the alpha parameter here. So we, the, we, if it builds fast, the alpha parameter will tell how fast it, it, we, we, we estimate the alpha parameter during the build up and the, the alpha parameter during the dissipation, for example. And the, the amount of angular momentum lost is very proportional to the height of this, this, these bumps. Uh, it's, so, it's my impression, or it seems like it's not a uh, constant. It keeps growing all the time. So, why is that? Yeah, it keeps growing, but th they have a stationary state. If the if you inject matter for infinite years, it will form a disk that is completely stable. Yes, so it tends to a uh, maximum like this, and here also. But uh, okay. So uh, the idea of fitting pipelines, so uh, the idea is that we should find light curves like these, like key, the, where we can see the inactive phase and the bump. We should subtract the, this magnitude here, which is the level from the photosphere. So now we have the variation. So we have variation of the magnitude. We fit the bump equation, there is an equation for it, and obtain its parameters. Transform this magnitude here, which is the magnitude of the star without the disk, to, to absolute magnitude. So we must know the distance from the object and the reddening, more or less, because we then we will try to, ex to understand the parameters of the star, because this, this is the part where just is the star, is the star. And we should estimate the parameters and the parameters parameters the, from the bumps, so the, the mass injection, the alphas, based on the parameters from the, the models that we made. So, okay, estimating the fundamental parameters. Here we have a photo of uh, the Yogo Warsaw, uh, the, the, the telescope that gave us the, the light curves that I'm presenting. And here is what we do. We take this, for example, this bump, 
and we select where it began, more or less between these regions and where it, it started to dissipate between this. And we use a Markov chain Monte Carlo to, to vary, vary the, 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 the parameters to fit the best, best parameters and extract the, 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 uh, the disk parameters and the stellar parameters as the best as we can with only these observations, the light curves. Uh, how much time do we have? Because it's re so here we have an example. Here we have another example. Here we lost some pro uh, some information here, but uh, so we so we have a poor x alpha determination here. Here we have other example. Here we lost a lot of information. Here we have a better one. These ones, these ones are located here. And here is what we do. So we have so here we have stellar parameters. How they they are correlated with each other. Here is the inclination. Here is the sigma zero, which which is really bad, because the the one thing from this work is that we we estimated badly the the parameters because we only had the visual information. If we have more, in, more uh, observables, we, we will constrain it better. But we can, could find these parameters. The alpha is between 0.1 and 0.1. And so here are the determinations of the alpha in the build-up and dissipation. Here is the location. The star is a little away from the, the, the main sequence. It is located here. And here it is, a, it is the fitting of the bumps. And from our whole sample, we saw that the, this is a whole sample of 54 stars we used. They are here. Uh, the distribution of mass is this one, so it is more centered between 10 and 15 masses. And it is not v very well, uh, not uh, exactly the one predicted by the initial mass function and the uh, and, and another study, uh, I put it here, another study presented more or less the, the, the incidence of B stars with mass in the, in the case we are in the small Magellanic Cloud, which, are, which is a galaxy nearby. So, our, we, so the distribution of mass in our sample, we saw that, um, okay, uh, we are more or less seeing more more massive stars. This this we don't know, so maybe uh, okay. Um, uh, with mass, the 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 with the mass, the the sigma zero increases with the mass. We found it more or less with the sample, and the sigma zero here compared with observations in infrared. So in infrared, we can see the stars that are more that have a more tenuous disk because they 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 emit more in their infrared. So here we is our, our sample in, in, in essence is biased toward the upper limit of the densities in the small Magellanic cloud. Uh, here we can see the lifetimes uh, away. And the viscous, the, the viscous parameter is are poorly constrained, but they are here more or less between 0 0.5, 0 0.6 for all the masses. And the, in the dissipation, it it, they are a little smaller. So this is an, in agreement with the dwarf novae, but in disagreement with magnetorotation instability predictions. And the angular momentum, this is the thing. The angular momentum, this, these are the predictions from the, the, the stellar evolution codes, and the angular momentum that we are seeing is smaller than what they predict. So this is a problem. This is a problem from, for them. Because they, they require that the disks be formed to extract the angular momentum from the star. And we don't see these disks. Our disk, the disks that we are seeing in these light curves are the most massive because they emit in the visual. So we don't see the angular momentum that should be removed from the, their, uh, their stars. So this is a finding that was unexpected, actually. But it, it was just my plan to, to, to find the... the, the the angular momentum loss rate, but it turned out that we are actually saying that uh, their, their angular momentum, the, here it is in log scale, sometimes it's an order of magnitude bigger than what we observe. So in this work we are constraining how the, we, the it says that their coupling in, in the, the, the angular momentum that is transported from the core to the su surface can't be that powerful as they imagine, because we don't see this angular momentum flowing away from the star. 
Uh, so the, our results from the angular momentum loss indicate that there is some assumed internal coupling isn't too strong. So this is a, an interesting. So in conclusions, B stars can be selected from the bulk of surveys by their photometric variability. Some precious light curves present clear bumps and dips and clear inactive phases, making them especially easy to model. It has been shown that fundamental stellar and disk parameters can be estimated from the light curves by using time-scaled pre-computed grid of BE light curves cal calculated using alpha disk theory and known uh, okay, uh, radiative transfer simulations. A first study was made with 64, uh, 54 selected light curves from the small Magellanic cloud, which has low metallicity containing 81 bumps and dips. Fundamental parameters for individual stars had large uncertainties. The viscous parameter alpha was estimated for the first time for a statistically significant sample of BE stars. The estimations challenged the models based on the magnetic rotation instability. We draw attention to the angular momentum loss of BE stars and estimated the angular momentum loss rates from a statistically significant sample of BE stars and the estimations of the angular momentum loss by B stars challenge the assumptions of internal coupling of angular momentum in stellar evolutionary models. B so B stars can be la laboratories for testing the forces acting on the astrophysical plasma disks because of the alpha parameter determinations, and B stars can put constraints on the internal mechanisms of angular momentum transport inside the stars. So oh, prospectus then I, I was just imagined. So the idea is modeling the bumps and dips from, from the large Magellanic cloud. We are not telling, but uh, uh, these, these light curves were from a, a, a galaxy nearby called, called Small Magellanic Cloud, which cir it circles the Milky Way. And the idea is to expand it to the large Magellanic cloud. There was a selection made by Professor Sabogal here. And this is currently being done with a colleague, for my colleague in a master's degree in Brazil. And if we can obtain other spectroscopic and photometric data of BE stars, we can constrain better the, the observations. So here we see these three are the disk parameters. And if we constrain, for example, if we can find with the spectroscopy the mass and locate, for example, the star in a, in, a in a cluster so we can determine its age better, and we can determine from the spectroscopy also the inclination angle better, here we have a better determination of the sigma zero, which will give a, a better determination of the angular momentum loss rate and the alphas in the build up and dissipation, for example. Uh, we should try to remove the bias of the densest disks because we are seeing so we are seeing the densest disks. So we should try to see them in maybe in the infrared, maybe in other uh, be uh, with uh, the, this another uh, survey. Uh, we should extend to, to the galaxy because we are seeing the other galaxies for some reason. But we have made contact with other people that with with other people from surveys like the Kelt team. And the polarimetry, uh, we do in Brazil with this, these small telescopes here, uh, polarimetry. Polarimetry is a kind of measurement in astrophysics. And uh, the, it can constrain the inclination angle, which is a major problem for us because we don't know the, the angle of inclination we're seeing. And uh, theoretical perspectives, just uh, non-isothermal things uh, address a problem there. Maybe col collaboration with stellar evolution theoreticians and addressing the angular momentum lost by the stars, which is transporting by the disk, and collaboration with turbulence theoreticians in building the VDD from magnetohydrodynamics simulations. And thank you. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> Again. Again, uh, it was v really technical. I, I really missed, so I'm, I'm really sorry for that. I hope you could understand the basic idea, the, what we are trying to do. Okay, so questions? You? Uh, I have a question about the time, the, the, the build of time scale parameter, mm. which uh, I, like, maybe I didn't get it. Yeah, but, uh, it appeared a little bit magical. I don't know if it has a relation with the mass, with the maybe the luminosity of the star. Like how 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 the parameter is is, uh, is determined uh, for each one of the stars. 
Yes, on this, from this uh, equation we go to this one, where there is no, this is, so, uh, he is, uh, okay, and here we define a new time parameter, and this time parameter, uh, it, it scales with the real time by this time scale parameter, which has the alpha here inside. So when, so we just uh, scale the, the predictions which have no dimension in time with the time that we observe in the light curve. So, and, and it, relate, it is related to the, so we, and, and these parameters we have to estimate based on only on, so if we can ex, ex, uh, estimate better the, the parameters from the start, we estimate better this whole thing, which gives us a better alpha Alpha based on the, the estimation. So we have to increase uh, other observables, not just photometry, as we said, or just spectroscopy, polarimetry can constrain it better. And this comes here, and this is related to the mass injection, and the angular momentum here is related to the sigma zero and the, the alpha parameter here. So the angular momentum, yeah. Okay. You? I'm not sure if I understood well, but uh, I will know if but the, the first uh, point, yeah, if there is a relation between the longitude of the disk and the rotational velocity. Yeah. There is a relation between what and what? <laughs> I want to know if there is a relation between the rotational velocity of the star and the, the I don't know how to say that. The longitude of the disk, yeah? The size of the disk. Is there any relationship between the angular momentum and the size of the disk? Is something that you No. The rule. Is that the question? Yeah. No, uh, okay. Uh. Yeah, okay, let me go. <laughs> I want to know if there is a relation yeah. between the size of the disk and the what 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 is the size of the disk? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I know how to say that. The radius. Radius. Yes. radius. No. The outer radius. The, you mean that this is what we call uh, the outer radius. This is a very unknown parameter. We don't know when the disk disappears and the and the the, the material starts to flow away fr into the, the interstellar region, the, into, into the space. We don't know them. But that, that, this, is the, this is why the angular momentum is better than mass loss, because mass loss will depend a lot of this parameter, be and the angular momentum not. We, uh, we don't know, the angular momentum depends, uh, it depends just on, on more, uh, it, it is, uh, the, the disk create, uh, the disk is a way of, uh, Transporting, transporting angular momentum. But the mass that is going to be lost will depend on the radius because if the radius is smaller, the angular momentum the same, the mass will be greater when it escapes. So, uh, and then what we observe. So this is a problem. We don't know this, and so mass lost is something that is very in the, we, we don't determine very well. But the angular momentum we can. Can you estimate that from the fittings that they do? Or yeah, from the fittings, the angular momentum, yes. No, the mass? The, the other radius is not, is not something that you can estimate? No, no, it is. No, the, there, there are some expressions that give more or less as a function of the stellar parameters, but mm, yes, it's very unknown. So related to that, is there any kind of a threshold, like when you have a gravitational pull and the angular momentum equilibrium kind of uh, There you can have some R out, some kind of gravitational pull of those, I mean if I understand correctly, like no. gravitational pull of the mass. Gravitational? Because those are the mass, no? They are the mass. Mm -hmm. so, the, so depending upon the radius, so the more gravitation will be attracted than the angular momentum going out. So from there you have a kind of equilibrium question? No, no, I don't. I don't. Okay, any more questions? Spanish, English, whatever. Estudiantes? Puede ser en español. En español también. No, no, no era un problema.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have a question. So you, at some point you show a bunch of curves uh, and then I, I think you said uh, that all of them are scales. Uh, yeah. Uh, in, actually, in the model, yeah, so no, forward. Like no, this? No, no, back, back. Back? back. Makes next. yeah, no one. So in the right hand side, you said that they collapse uh, in the right. The right? Yes, is that what you said? That they, they collapse and then there is something with the scaling you mentioned? Did I miss something? So, okay, my question is, uh, the mechanism here hmm. for each of these curves are exactly the same, right? So they yes. So no, the difference here is the inclination angle. It's just, it's, all, it's all okay. Here it's 30 degrees, so you're seeing more or less like from above, and here you're seeing by, from edge, from edge. And here we have an obscuration of the disk, and then the dissipate, so we, because there is a star and there is a disk in front of you. So the disk gets in front of the light from the star. Okay. And then when the disk dissipates, it, the star appears again. And here's the opposite. No, here, here, here the star and the disk are seen. So the disk adds light to what you're seeing. And then when it dissipates, the, there's just the star. What I do get for this curve is that the, the rise time, so the time that it takes to go up, is different from the time that it takes to go down. You know what I mean? Because of the... Because of what you see here, what? Yeah, so all of them start very fast. From yes. zero, so they start very fast. And yeah. then they decay very slow. So why the time to go up and down is different? That's my question. Is, 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 is something I'm missing in the model or? Mm, yeah, maybe, maybe, well, when it starts to go up, the disk that there was no disk, so then so the disk is created, and then it spans outwards. And that seems very fast process. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then? and it and then when it dissipates, this most of the mass is reaccreted back. So so you see you still so now you see you, you now the coupling is between the whole disk, so the whole disk must go back again. So uh, and uh, um. It must go. Um, so it, the region which which emits, which you can see, is still with a lot of mass. You can see until it all comes back. Maybe maybe this is what you. Okay, I'm just curious if that's a relation between the time that it takes to go down and the time because all of them takes the same, or maybe not. Yeah. No, I put here time, but this is the the tau the tau parameter here. Yeah. So yeah. So this these are the scaled. And you uh, just remember, this is the difference be in, in wavelength you're seeing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is more blue, more, more but they are all visible, in the visible. So in the infrared, you will see even greater things here. So maybe in infrared, we can detect the smaller ones, because the smaller ones, which wouldn't be detected in visible, will be seen in the infrared. And so we can find the, mo the less massive ones. OK, any more questions? If not, let's thank the speaker again. Well. Well.